Mr. Patel has a question. Let me address that question first. Sure. I want to know how we can define the residual stress within the materials. Okay. Very good question. Uh, I have been using the term residual stress, but I have not defined uh, and we have also looked at the causes. For instance, the residual stress can come from intrinsic crystalline defects like vacancies and dislocations. They can come from uh, processes like phase transformations. They can be because of voids and cracks and of course, voids and cracks themselves are not sources of residual stress, but if you have a far field stress, they can be amplified by voids and cracks. And if you have making a component for instance, even the component could be a simple component like even a slab of material, you could have residual thermal stresses. And I had also pointed out that this residual thermal stress could even be uh, intentionally introduced for beneficial purposes. Typically, what we want might want to do is we want to introduce uh, residual compressive stress on the surface, which has very good beneficial effect. Um, so, how do we define this residual stress? Residual stress is the stress present in the material in the absence of any external loading. Okay. So, let me write that down. Now, it is important to note, of course, if you do have external loading, then this residual stress would be modified. But the very definition of residual stress is that, if I do not apply any external stress, still I should be able to have some stress in the material. Now, uh, one important point to be noted is that a body in equilibrium, that is a body free standing body, can not fully be totally compressive or totally tensile. In other words, residual stresses of one sign will have to balance residual stresses of other sign, so that the net body which is now a free standing body is in equilibrium. So, let me for instance give a very trivial kind of an example, wherein suppose I have a cross section of a material for instance a slab of material. Now, for instance suppose this is a slab of glass which I want to make and I want to toughen the glass. So, what will I do? I while solidifying the glass will blow cold air from the top on the both sides. So, what will happen that the surface will solidify first. So, I am just drawing a small layer on the surface which is solidified and later on the inner layer will solidify the inner region and when the inner region solidifies the glass will contract and in the process it will actually pull the uh, material which is now the surface inward and it will introduce compressive stresses on the surface. But if the body has to be an equilibrium, then the surface compressive stress has to be balanced by tensile stresses within the body. So, I will just assume for a sort of a sort of an approximation that this is my compressive region, which I have marked in red. Of course, as you know, this is now a variation in stress, which I can plot, but just uh, so I will just marking the compressive region in red now. And now, the inner region has to be tensile to balance that compressive stresses. Now, suppose I look at this body in cross section, this is my cross section again and so if my dimension here is for instance w and this is my layer. Then if I plot my stresses, so what will happen is that you will have large compressive stress which I of course, is negative in value. Suppose my compression side is a negative then I will have large compressive stresses and then it will go to 0 here and so this will be like this a curve something like that of course, I am not drawing the exact mathematical curve, but some kind of an approximation and the inner region will be tensile. 
but it will be in a such a way assuming that this length of course, I am not drawn this diagram to a scale typically this would be a small layer, this will be a larger layer assuming that my overall stresses have to balance out in other words this area which is the negative side has to balance out the area in the positive side. In other words this is now my tensile stresses. Now, uh, because this value of the tensile stresses over spread over a large area or a large volume the magnitude is small and that is why it does not play a much detrimental effect and the overall effect of this kind of a stress state for my body is beneficial. Uh, of course, one thing we want why we are doing this toughening to glass is that we know that we want to avoid crack propagation glass, glasses are very brittle and what kind of glass are we talking about? We are talking about the typical plate glasses which are nothing but silicate glasses. Now, in such kind of glasses since they are very brittle the crack tip is very sharp right and therefore, cracks can propagate. In uh, if I am talking about a ductile material some of the annals might have to be slightly modified, but in a brittle material crack propagation is perhaps perhaps the very easy mode of fracture. Now, in the presence uh, in the absence of any kind of compressive stresses we would and in, in a general body like this we note that cracks of length a on the surface are equivalent in effect to cracks of length 2 a on the interior. So, suppose I have a crack of length a on the surface this is my crack of length a this is equivalent to a crack of length 2 a inside. In other words cracks on the surface are twice as detrimental as cracks on the interior of the material okay. and therefore, it is for me very imperative that I protect my surface which is also the agent where all the other uh, elements act like for instance corrosive agents etcetera etcetera. Therefore, I need to protect my surface and that is where I introduce my compressive stresses which is large in magnitude, but over a small region and the tensile stresses are small in magnitude over a larger region and the overall effect is beneficial because this small magnitude uh, is uh, tensile stress is acting in a region where cracks are half as detrimental as on the surface. So, this overall process of introducing compressive stresses on the surface gives me a beneficial effect as far as the fracture of the glass takes place. So, typically I am suppose doing an experiment in which I am trying to bend this glass and break. So, a bending kind of experiment it will break and this surface compressive stresses helps me in uh, you know improving the fracture properties of this glass. So, residual stresses are stresses which are present in the absence of any external agent and they can be detrimental in many cases like for instance they can lead to an warping of the component they themselves can lead to crack cracking of the body if suppose the body happens to be very brittle, but if engineered properly we can use compressive stress uh, residual stresses to uh, our beneficial effect. Now, and for the last point we saw that was a for a freestanding body you cannot have purely uh, freestanding body in pure compression or pure tension overall we have to balance one, one with the other. So, that the overall body is a net equilibrium. Yeah, please so proceed with your question. Here, uh, on the surface, the, the this residual stress uh, magnitude maximum on the surface or in bulk? I think on the surface. Okay. Uh, the way we are doing it, the way we are doing this whole process is that what we do? We are having a molten pool of glass, for instance. I am blowing some air on the surface, and I just blow air for sufficient region to form a thin layer of solidified glass. I make sure that layer is very thin okay. and obviously, the air the heat transfer because of the air can only take place by convection only on the surface uh, below that it has to experience through conduction through the glass which would be a less efficient agent. Okay. After solidifying this I will stop this air blowing and allow the remaining glass to solidify perhaps in a normal way. Of course, I can continue with the blowing of glass uh, air also, but for now simplicity I will just stop blowing the air the remaining when the remaining bulk of the glass solidifies it pulls in the remaining the already solidified one inwards. And that is why the residual compressive stress is coming, which is larger in magnitude over a small region. Okay. The topic we are considering next is the important topic of Miller indices. This is an important topic because in crystallography, planes and directions are represented by Miller indices, and in fact, we have already uh, used informally and perhaps a, li a little uh, measure these Miller indices when we were trying to describe various aspects of crystals the concept of Miller indices is irrevocably and inextricably connected with the concept of crystals and the concept of lattices. So, we need to understand uh, Miller indices in detail and thoroughly. Uh, the important point to note right at the outset is that Miller indices are can be for planes and they also can be for directions. Miller indices for planes are slightly 
easier uh, diff more difficult to understand compared to the Miller indices for directions. Miller indices for directions is as simple as understanding normal vectoral directions. Uh, and uh, the second point to be noted is that Miller indices can be used equally well to describe lattices or to describe crystals. And we have already seen that lattices are not the same as crystals and especially this concept becomes more powerful when we try to describe uh, for instance crystals of lower symmetry. In other words, we are dealing with uh, a family of directions in a crystal. So, we have to note that we have Miller indices for directions which are pretty simple and straightforward to understand and the Miller indices for planes wherein there is a certain prescribed procedure to arrive at them and we will see that procedure and also we have to note that Miller indices can be for a lattice or for a crystal and the important difference becomes all the more obvious when you are talking about a concept known as the family of directions or family of planes. So, let us take up this important concept and try to understand Miller indices. So, as I have a slide here, let me uh, explain that Miller indices are used to specify directions and planes. These directions and planes could be in lattices or in crystals. It should be mentioned at the right at the outside that special care should be taken to see if the Miller indices are for a plane or a lattice or for a crystal. So, please remember that distinction has to be absolutely clear right from the beginning. The number of indices will match with the dimension of the lattice or of the crystal. This is an important point to note. In one dimension, there will be just one index to describe a Miller index. In two, there will be two indices. In three dimensions, which will be the typical dimension we will be dealing with in normal crystals, there will be three indices to describe a crystal or a lattice. As I pointed, some aspects of Miller indices, especially those for planes, are not intuitively understood. That means, there is a certain procedure involved, which is not uh, what you might call intuitive and therefore, some time has to be spent over these Miller indices concept of planes to understand them. So, once again, we have Miller indices for planes and directions and we could have Miller indices for lattices and crystals. So, how do we understand the Miller indices for directions? We know from our coordinate geometry that a vector r passing from the origin to any lattice point can be written as r 1 into a, r 2 into b and r 3 into c where a, b, c are the basis vectors along the three coordinate axes. Now, in Miller indices for instance let me start with a simple example. For instance, I have a vector which is shown in this orange color which starts from the origin and which ends in the point phi 3 okay. and my coordinate axis now this happens to be a simple kind of crystal where coordinate axis are orthogonal to each other and are described by the basis vectors a and b. Now, this is as simple as coordinate geometry. So, the I get the Miller indices by taking this vector and its projection for instance the vector is 5 units along a direction, 3 units along b direction and therefore, I write down those coefficients the phi and the 3 and I will get the Miller indices for this direction as phi 3. So, this is a very very simple kind of procedure and very simple to understand. So, let me go through this example once again for sake of clarity. So, I have a vector which is goes from O to say a point P and the coordinate system in this case happens to be simple it could in, in effect you will see later that it could be any general coordinate system wherein the lengths of A and B could be any and the included angle also could be any, any arbitrary value. So, you got this basis vectors a and b and this vector connects the origin which is 0 0 to the point phi 3. So, the projections of this vector along the x axis the a direction and the b directions are phi and 3. So, I write that down and the important point to note is the brackets. So, I enclose them in these kind of square brackets. So, Miller indices for directions are always enclosed in this kind of square brackets and my Miller indices for the direction I have shown is phi 3. Since I am working in two dimensions, I have pointed out the number of indices will match with the number of dimensions of that space which is now 2. So, my Miller index for this direction would be phi 3. Let us consider some more examples to understand the concept of Miller indices. So, again I am referring myself to the same two dimensional lattice. So, the Miller indices phi 3 was for the lattice right. So, I was phi 3 uh, which I drew last time was for a lattice and I consider the same lattice now again, but now consider a different kind of a vector. So, now my origin is here 
and the vector say the point p connects the point 4 minus 2. Right. So, this is 4 units along the a direction and minus 2 units along the b direction. So, in vectorial notation I could write it as 4 a minus 2 b the way I have normally would represent a vector in this vectorial notation. So, I will write this in 4 a plus 2 b this as you can see is in 3 dimensions since we are in the current example we are dealing with only with 2 dimension. So, I have only values for r 1 and r 2 and my uh, basis vector would are a and b here. So, my projections are 4 and minus 2 therefore, I can write this Miller indices as 4 minus 2 right, but then I can factor out the common factors and write it as 2 times 2 minus 1 and the Miller indices for the direction excluding the magnitude would be 2 minus 1. So, let me go through these steps um, on the board, so that the simple concept is sort of re-emphasized. So, I have 4 units along A minus 2 units along B right and if I want to write the Miller indices for the whole thing I can write it as 4 and I will put the minus on top as 2 bar ok. I will not write the minus in front I will write it as a minus on the top. So, this is the convention I can pull out the common factors and write it as 2 2 times here and there is a 1 bar. Now, this kind of representation of the Miller indices for this direction includes the magnitude, but typically Miller indices are uh, we exclude the magnitude we want to refer to only a direction and typically a direction in the lattice in that case I will drop that 2 and I will write it as 2 minus 1. So, this will be my direction or, or the Miller indices for the particular vector which I drew on the computer. So, this is the direction 2 1 bar. So, a few important points are noteworthy here number 1 uh, the is the one I mentioned the square brackets number 2 the negatives are written as bars above the numbers number 3 that I typically drop the magnitude out from the common factors and take it to the least I use only the least common factors inside and an important point now this Miller indices does not represent a single direction, but an entire host of directions in this crystal which are all parallel and which have this magnitude of 2 1 bar which is. So, in other words suppose I take another vector starting from here this point and I go parallel to this vector in other words this vector has taken me 1 unit along this 2 unit so 1 2 and finish up here so, this is my starting point. So, this is not my origin now this is somewhere else. So, I will call this point x and I call this point y and now my vector would connect these points x and y let me try to join a straight line through that which passes through this lattice point. Now, I want to locate the Miller indices for this direction it would be exactly identical. I will not have to introduce a new Miller indices it will also be represented by the Miller indices to 1 bar. So, this is noteworthy. So, whenever I am writing a Miller indices it is not for a direction but a set of all directions which are going parallel to each other. In other words in any point in the lattice I could I, I could make that as my origin and I draw a vector which is uh, of course, if I want to take into account the magnitude like for instance the magnitude of everything including magnitude this would be my representation of this and dropping the magnitude this would be my representation I need to worry about uh, I, need, I, I need to not write this 2 and I can start from any point in the lattice and draw a vector and all those vectors of this kind would be clarified or would be used by the same Miller indices. Uh, Soumya has a doubt. So, for giving the Miller indices is it necessary that from the starting point of the direction we should shift the origin there like if we have to write the Miller indices of x y do we need to shift the origin at x and then right is it necessary. Um, I am not sure I am understanding your question fully, but let me an answer whatever is possible. Uh, the origin can be anywhere in the lattice ok, the new origin of course, every lattice I fix an origin for some purpose ok, a normal lattice does not have any origin right, a origin is a construct of our mind ok. Uh, therefore, the normal lattices I can choose my origin anywhere, but suppose I had already chosen my origin O and I had constructed this vector and I represent that Miller indices of that vector as 2 1 actually the 2 1 will be half the length of this. So, suppose I want to call this point P this point here as P and this point as uh, in between somewhere. So, I call this as uh, 
uh, m point mid point. So, actually the this vector having this magnitude 2 times in square brackets 2 1 bar is this O p vector. The vector 2 1 bar is actually half the length and connects O to m right it is half the length. Now, all these O m kind of vectors I can translate this anywhere in the lattice and use my origin anywhere would be represented by the same Miller indices. So, there is no I it origin is irrelevant as far as the Miller indices go, okay. but there will be special circumstances where we will worry about origins also. So, I let us suppose I have a single crystal and I am worrying about certain what you call certain processes occurring then I may have to specify that this actually I am referring to this particular Miller indices or this particular direction and not anything else. So, that might be done keeping in the uh, context in view, but in general as when I write down a um, member like this as 2 1 bar in square brackets there is no specific association to any lattice point at this point of time, but I may want to do it later, but that would be under those circumstances. So, we have seen that uh, it is pretty straightforward to construct uh, Miller indices for any direction in a crystal and uh, we just go through the procedure for finding the Miller indices for any arbitrary direction. Now, for instance in all the in the couple of examples we considered before we always started as one of the points starting point was the origin. Suppose we do not start with the origin then how do I go about constructing the Miller indices for any direction any arbitrary direction we consider here. Of course, I do so with an example for um, a direction like a b. So, this is my orange direction a b and with respect to the origin for instance this is a b direction as a tail of the arrow at 1 3 and the head at phi minus 1 with res this is with respect to this coordinate system in green which is o centered at the origin o. So, this is my old orthogonal system wherein my a and b vectors are as follows and therefore, the negative b direction is the downward direction. Okay. So, what we do is we subtract the ex coordinates of the end point from the starting point of the vector denoting the direction. So, we subtract say this coordinates and this coordinates from phi minus 1. So, the difference would be phi minus 1 would be 4 which is shown here minus 1 minus 3 would be minus 4. So, it will be 4 minus 4. So, this is the subtraction procedure of the b minus a coordinates. Okay. I would first enclose this in square brackets and remove the comma see for instance when I am mentioning coordinates or differences in coordinates I would use a comma between the two numbers here I remove those uh, com that comma and I would write the negative numbers the bar. So, this direction would be in square brackets 4 4 bar as you can see here. Then I would as before factor out the common factor 4. So, you will have a 1 1 bar right and suppose I am so there is a mistake here suppose you are only considered the magnitude I would erase this 4 and leave it as a 1 1 bar. So, I am not worried about the uh, magnitude of the direction, but just the direction then I will write it as a 1 1 bar oh sorry there is written here. So, we have only the direction then I write 1 1 bar and if I am concerned with the magnitude and direction then I will write it as a 4 times 1 1 bar. So, it is needless to say the first vector which is a 4 1 1 bar is 4 times in length as compared to a vector which is 1 1 bar. The magnitude of the vector which can be written as a the mod of the Miller indices is nothing but the square root of 1 square plus 1 minus 1 square which is root 2. So, the length of this vector a to say the point some point x here in between would be root 2 and there are 4 root 2s here in the total vector which joins a to b right. So, it is very very simple it is like the normal coordinate geometry and of course, as I pointed out I could always translate this vector a b to the origin I can put this vector on to the origin and that means, I take a to o automatically b will go to p and therefore, an equivalent direction as far as the lattice goes in fact, this all this vector a b and o p all belong to the same set in other words they are all described by the same Miller indices and I could describe this o p also by this Miller indices 4 1 1 bar in square brackets or if I am just concerned about the direction then I could call it a 1 1 bar direction. So, we have seen that for um, the procedure for getting a Miller indices for an arbitrary direction is to subtract the coordinates of the end point from the uh, or the uh, starting point from the end point then enclose it in square brackets and put the negatives on top as bars factor out common factors and we, have, we have got the Miller indices for the direction. So, re reasonably straightforward procedure. 
Now, um, as I told you that uh, if I want to write a general direction in two dimensions for a direction, I will call it an h k and in three dimensions, three dimensions we told that we need three indices to describe a direction and therefore, I will write a general direction as h k l and the length of the vector represented by this Miller index h k l is square root of h square plus k square plus l square. So, and suppose correspondingly suppose I go to four dimensions then I will have four uh, h k l m or one of those kind of representations and they will have four indices enclosed in square brackets and the magnitude of that vector will be square root of h square plus k square plus l square plus m square. So, this is for Miller indices in three dimensions. So, um, to understand this Miller indices better let us focus on the cubic system and we have already uh, seen uh, cubic lattices, we have seen cubic unit cells, we have also seen cubic crystals that is some simple examples of cubic crystals more complicated examples we will consider later and therefore, I would like to know all the important directions and planes uh, in a cubic system. So, for instance this is a cube in front of me and equivalently I have a cube here which you can see and now I want to understand the important directions as obvious the important directions in this cube are obviously the edge direction which is represented by the edge like this. So, this is my direction or one of the other edges for instance this could be another edge for instance or this could be another edge. So, this one of these edges it could be the phase diagonal like this is a phase diagonal as you can see here. So, let me come out and show you. So, this is my phase diagonal which is an important direction it could be one of the other phase diagonals like this or this phase diagonal it could be a body diagonal. So, it starts from the origin goes to one of the body diagonals it could be another body diagonal for instance it could be like this right. So, these are for instance the important directions there are more uh, what you call higher order directions which could be connecting for instance a corner to half the phase diagonal for instance like this. So, this is half the edge and the vector goes like this or let me equivalently place it here. So, it connects the vertex to half the phase diagonal and the procedure for generating all these directions is exactly same as we saw in two dimensions, but we will consider them one by one. So, let us go back to our slides and we see that for instance now assuming that this is my x direction the Miller indices for this direction would be 1 0 0. Of course, I can easily obtain this because now and I have not taken into account the magnitude if I am taking into account the magnitude then the vector would start from this point and would at this end at this point which I can call a point A. So, this will be my vector if I am worried about the magnitude, but the general direction 1 0 0 not taking into account magnitude would be this direction 1 0 0. The 0 1 0 on this other hand so assuming this is my x axis. So, this is my x axis in this direction this is my y axis and this is my z axis right. So, the vector along the y direction would be a 0 1 0 vector and how do I obtain it this is my 0 comma 1 comma 0 and I subtract it from a 0 0 0 and I get 0 1 0. Similarly, the third vector is 0 0 1 which is as you can see for a cube are equivalent. Uh, phase diagonal is represented by a vector like this for instance this phase diagonal vector uh, in Miller indices notation would be 1 1 0 and exactly I would obtain it the same way I did my previous uh, operations this is for instance the coordinates of this point here would be 1 comma 1 comma 0 and the origin is 0 0 0. So, my subtraction will lead me to 1 comma 1 comma 0 and I make my Miller indices by enclosing in square brackets the number 1 1 0. Therefore, I got my Miller indices 1 1 0. Equivalent uh, phase diagonals are for instance this one which is 0 1 1 this one which is 1 0 1 and I could have opposite of these directions for instance if this direction is 0 1 1 my opposite direction which would be from this point to this point. So, let me draw the direction would be 0 1 bar 1 bar. So, it is the opposite direction in other words if I have any direction h k l. So, this is my general direction which is given as 
h k l then my opposite direction to that this is my h k l opposite direction would be h bar k bar l bar. The other important direction when I am talking about Miller indices is the as I told you the body diagonal which is now the given by index 1 1 1 because this point here for instance has coordinates of 1 comma 1 comma 1 and this my origin O which is coordinates of 0 0 0 and therefore by subtraction I obtain my Miller indices as 1 comma 1 comma 1. So, for a cube we have seen perhaps a these kind of indices which are very small integers as their values for h k l are called low index plane directions. So, we also introduce a concept called the low index directions. So, let me write down some examples of low index directions like 1, 2, 0. Apart from the examples we already seen for instance 1, 1, 1 would be a low index direction. We could have some other direction for instance we could have is for instance 3, 0, 1. For instance, so, and also we will we'll later see that this the same rules apply if we are talking about low index directions or low index planes wherein these integers are small numbers. For instance, an example of an uh, index which would not be a low index direction would be say for instance, let me choose an extreme kind of example say 42, 11, 3. So, this would not be called this will not come under the category of low index direction. Now, the importance of low index directions uh, will become later clear when we talk about slip and other kind of things and uh, we have to remember that often when you are doing any experiment we would be worried about these kind of uh, directions which are the low index directions which would have more physical meaning. Okay. The concept of family of directions is an important one and this is especially so when you are talking about properties. We have already seen that according to the Neumann's principle the symmetry of any property at least has to be equal to the symmetry of the crystal. For instance, suppose I have a this were a cubic crystal I could actually take a for instance even a body centered cubic crystal for instance and I have already mentioned suppose I have a property for instance uh, it could be any one of the properties which I need to consider if it is along this direction it has a certain value measured value then it will be exactly equal along this direction and so along the other direction. So, all these three directions which are related now by a three fold which is going along the body diagonal would have exactly the same measure of the property. And suppose I measure a value of property like this then the opposite direction will also have the same property needless to say. So, this is coming from the cubic symmetry right the symmetry of this cubic crystal I am holding. Similarly, suppose I have a property which has a value certain value along this direction. Then for instance, it could be for instance uh, the conductivity of a crystal or it could be another other kind of a vectoral property. Then the conductivity will be exactly identical along this phase diagonal also and so for this phase diagonal or this phase diagonal. And if it has a certain value along this body diagonal then it will have the same value along all the body diagonals of this crystal. So, in other words when I am doing my experiment I do not have to measure this property along all these directions all I need to do is pick one of these directions for instance the x axis direction and I measure my value of the property then I know from the symmetry of this crystal that the property will be exactly identical along the other directions of the cube the same 1 0 0 kind of directions. Therefore, I have a concept now something known as the family of directions. One concept we already seen is the parallel set of directions right wherein I could just translate the vector somewhere and move it from one lattice the origin from one lattice point to another any other lattice point and my Miller indices would not would be no different for that direction and that is the set of directions. But this I am describing is the word used is family and this is the family of directions. So, 
it is an important concept in Miller indices and as far as the property of crystals go. And I have to remember that when I am describing a family of directions, what are the rules which apply. So, the important definition of the family of directions is a set of directions related by symmetry operations of the lattice or the crystal is called a family of directions. So, in other words let me repeat the sentence again a set of directions related by symmetry operations of the lattice or the crystal is called a family of directions. In other words it is a symmetrically related set of directions. Similarly, later on we will see we can describe a family of planes. So, now we have introduced a family concept of a family of directions and a family of directions is represented by the Miller index notation as the same original H K L. Um, actually the preferred uh, uh, direction notation would be U V W I do not know I have been using H K L before. Okay. So, let me replace it by U V W typically the preferred notation for directions is U V W and for planes is H K L. So, let me replace that. So, I will call this as U V W. So, let me write this in brackets as U V W. So, this is my preferred notation and I will reserve the H K L notation for planes, but the important thing to note here is the presence of the kind of brackets. So, no a single direction is represented by So, I can represent a family of directions as by a different bracket and they are written as u v w within those brackets. Now, so sometimes uh, this kind of a sign this kind of a bracket is also used to represent an averaging process plus re please remember this has to be this is distinct from an averaging process wherein in which context would it will be clear that that is not a family of directions. But before I go down to uh, deciding the list of members in a family which is what I mean by family of directions as I told you in the cubic crystal for instance this one the 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 all belong to the same family. I would ask myself two questions. So, the two questions are is one considering L the lattice or the crystal this has to be absolutely clear and what crystal system is one considering when we are describing the family this is a very important question without considering the crystal system I and more importantly the point group I will not be able to identify the members of the family. We will take up examples to clarify this point in detail, but these two questions have to be asked at right at the outset. Now, when we are talking about a Miller indices for a direction in a lattice versus in a crystal for instance. So, I am considering a direction in a lattice versus a distance in a crystal we have to note that we have already seen this in detail in fact that a crystal can have symmetry equal to that or lower than that of the lattice. So, that means that if the symmetry of the crystal is lower than that of the lattice then two members belonging to the same family in the lattice need not belong to the same family in a crystal and we will take up example to explain explain this. So, let me repeat this important point that there could be two members which belong to the same family in the lattice, but when you are talking about a crystal made out of that lattice then they may or may not belong to the same family. So, that depends on the symmetry of the crystal you have considered. Again suppose I am talking about a cubic crystal then I mentioned this point group issue then suppose there is a member all the members I want to identify for instance of the 110 direction. Now, suppose the crystal has a point group 4 by m 3 bar 2 by m then the number of members of the family would be different compared to for instance if the crystal had a point group symmetry 2 3. Therefore, I need to worry about the point group of the crystal before I write down the members of the family and this is because crystals can have lower symmetry than a lattice. So, this has to be absolutely understood and we have already seen enough examples to actually uh, make this point um, clear beyond doubt. And as far as the Miller indices and their family goes we will take up examples to explain this concept. So, once again 
to summarize this slide a symmetrically related set of directions and later on symmetrically related set of planes is called a family of directions or a family of planes and the symmetry word is the key word when you are talking about a family and this will automatically be clear considering the point group symmetry of the lattice or the crystal. Now, let me write down take some examples to clarify this point of the family of directions and in this case I have for instance a square lattice. So, this is not a crystal this is a lattice and I want to identify a family of directions. Now, for instance I can start with a direction like 1 0 let me see the directions here clear 1 0 if I want to write down all the members of this family then I would write them down as 1 0 0 1 1 bar 0 and 0 1 bar the 1 bar 0 being opposite in direction to 1 0 the 0 1 bar being opposite in direction to 0 1. So, I have 4 members belonging to the family 0 1. So, let me write them down on the board for further clarity. So, this word square takes care of the symmetry and the word lattice tells me I am talking about a lattice. Okay. I am writing as a subscript for clarity. So, the members of this family are So, the brackets on the left hand side is this kind of a bracket the right hand side bracket is a square bracket and I think these brackets are called carrots right. So, these kind of brackets on the right hand side and so there are 4 members belonging to this family and each one of this member is equivalent to all the members based on the symmetry of the square lattice. Okay, so, that point has to be kept in mind. We already seen the symmetry of a square lattice is nothing but 4 mm symmetry. So, I got 4 mm symmetry for the square lattices. Now, uh, how do I understand this relation in terms of the language of symmetry? For instance, I am talking about 1 0 and 0 1 for this is my 1 0 direction and this is my 0 1 direction they are related by a four fold symmetry. Of course, I could use other symmetry operators also to relate them a mirror for instance, but I am using a four fold for simplicity. So, four fold rotation would take my 1 0 direction to a 0 1 direction and therefore, they are equivalent as far as the uh, their uh, role in the lattice and therefore, they belong to the same family. The 1 1 and the 1 bar 1 belong to the same family. So, let me write down the family of directions for instance for this 1 1 what are the members of this family they are 1 1 1 bar 1 1 1 bar and 1 bar 1 bar. The 1 1 is opposite in direction to 1 bar 1 bar the 1 bar 1 is opposite in direction in 1 1 bar. So, I have 4 members to this family and all of them have identical role as far as the lattice goes. So, how do I relate my 1 1 direction to the 1 bar 1 in the in terms of the symmetry operator the they are related by a four fold rotation again. So, a four 90 degree rotation would take my 1 1 to a 1 1 bar I could alternately use the vertical mirror also which is present for this mirror to take this to that direction, but I have just used a, a four fold. So, any of the one of the symmetry operators can be used to relate these two directions and since they are related by a symmetry operator of the lattice and now these are symmetry operators of the lattice and therefore, they are equivalent and they belong to the same family. Now, you talk about the direction 0 1 and 0 1 bar uh, they can be related by 2 fold or a double action of a 4 fold and therefore, they belong to the same family. So, similarly I can start identifying various directions in this crystal I could take a certainly uh, lower index direction for instance let me choose one I could choose an index starting say from this point go all the way here and this would be my a direction and I can find out all the members of this family. So, this suppose this is my new origin O prime okay. then this vector for instance this is along the x direction it is 1 along the y direction it is 2. So, I can represent it as a 1 2 kind of a direction and I can write down all the members of this family which would now the generic name for the family would be 1 2 and I can write down all the members. Okay. Now, if I want to write down for any general direction h k I can write down the rule of all the members of the family would be they will be h k h bar k h k bar h bar k bar k h k k bar h k h bar k bar h bar and some of these are just opposite directions to the function h bar k bar is opposite h k. 
In other words, the gener generic rule for this kind of a system of very high symmetry happens to be I can exchange the first and second index and any of the indices can be made negative and this is because of the high symmetry of the square lattice. This point has to be absolutely kept in mind. I cannot do this exchange of indices and permutation of indices and changing them into negative without understanding the symmetry of the lattice. So, let me now jump a little lower and choose a rectangle lattice and see that how certain members belong to the same family in the square lattice, but now I have a lattice of lower symmetry and therefore, those members no longer belong to the same family. So, let me uh, take the very first example for instance, the 0 1 does not belong to the same family as 1 0. Now, for instance previously the 1 0 and the 0 1 were belonging to the same family and that were related by four fold direction, but there is no four fold in the rectangle lattice. You know the symmetry of the rectangle lattice is 2 mm, we have considered this before and all the symmetry operators of the lattice are shown here within the unit cell on the right hand side below. Therefore, when I want to write down the family of planes 1 0, I would not include 0 1 as the member of the family. So, moment I go into the rectangle lattice instead of a square lattice and I want to write down these members of this family now 1 0 and now I have to mention it is a rectangle lattice. Therefore, I will see that I cannot include 0 1 as a member of the same family. So, I will write down the members of this family as 1 0 and 1 bar 0. So, two other members which were originally part of the same family do, long, do not any longer belong to the same family when you are talking about a rectangle lattice okay. and this is because of the lower symmetry of the lattice. So, 1 0 will have its family with members as 1 0 and 1 bar 0. The 0 1 family will have its own members as 0 1 and 0 1 bar. So, this the originally the four members now are split into two families, two nuclear families because of the lower symmetry of the lattice. However, if two directions are related by some symmetry operator, then you can continue to relate them by belong to the same family. See 1 1 and 1 bar 1, which was an example we saw before, 1 1 and 1 bar 1 be had originally belonged to the same family in the square lattice they continue to belong to the same family in the rectangle lattice. So, this is my 1 1 direction and the this is my 1 bar 1 direction and they are related by a mirror plane this vertical mirror. So, I can draw a vertical mirror here. So, since the mirror plane exists therefore, my 1 1 and 1 bar 1 belong to the same family and there is also an horizontal mirror that means, the 0 1 and 0 1 bar belong to the same family which is what I had written for the 1 0 which is exactly equivalent to the 0 1 also because of the presence of vertical and horizontal mirrors. On the other hand a, a direction like 1 2 which is drawn here does not belong to the 2 1 and they are different the different directions here different colors for these directions imply that they do not belong to the same family. So, 1 2 belongs to a different family the 2 1 belongs to a different family because there is no symmetry operator taking 1 to the other. In the case of the cubic crystals a cubic lattice which we considered below before they would have belonged to the same family. And in fact, you, they will, you would have a, mi a mirror passing this mirror would take this diagonal mirror would take the 1 2 to the 2 1 in the case of the square lattice and in the case of the rectangle lattice they would not belong to the same family. So, um, I can write down a general formula for writing down all the uh, members of the family. For instance, I can write the formula for h k as h k h bar k h k bar h bar k bar. So, if I have any general direction h k the members of that family would be 1, 2, 3, 4 members and they would be h k h bar k h k bar h bar k bar and we can clearly see that the first and second index cannot be interchanged, but they can be made negative. So, this is my rule for the rectangle lattices okay. and this is something which is to be borne in mind. Now, I will just summarize this important example. So, what I am contrasting here is the square lattice with respect to the rectangle lattice. The rectangle lattice has a 2 mm symmetry, the square lattice has a 4 mm symmetry and we have to remember one of those mirrors in the square lattice is a diagonal mirror right. And therefore, when we come to a rectangle lattice certain members which originally belong to the same family in the square lattice no longer belong to the same family in the rectangle lattice. 
and the examples which belong to the same family are 1 1 and 1 bar 1 belong to the same family which are related by a mirror 0 1 and 0 1 bar belong to the same family related by two fold direction by two fold rotation 1 0 and 0 1 do not belong to the same family because there is no symmetry operator taking one to the other 2 1 and 1 2 do not belong to the same family because there is again no symmetry operator taking one to the other. On the other hand for instance square lattice 2 1 and 1 2 belong to the same family and were related by the diagonal mirror. So, it is clear from even these two examples that I cannot blindly write down the members of a family. I cannot go for instance and somebody tells me that I have a lattice please write down the members of the family. I cannot do so without asking the important question what is the symmetry of the system. If I do not ask this question I cannot write down the members and only a symmetrically related set would form the members of the family. Now, as before we will try to make some crystals out of the square lattice and try to write down the members of that family and again we will note the same thing like I cannot just because some crystal is based on the square lattice I cannot use equivalence based on the lattice. Now, I have to consider equivalence in the crystal and we already seen especially uh, for instance this example we have seen wherein we took a square lattice and decorated with a triangle that for instance with respect to water flow from the top direction or water flow from the bottom direction they are not equivalent and this property of non equivalence should also come out in our definition of the family of directions which are related by symmetry. So, this is absolutely clear. Now, let us consider a square crystal. Now, this is not a square crystal like the one we could construct for instance starting with the square lattice and putting a circular motif which is would give me a 4 mm 1 0 and 0 1 belong to the same family which are related by a 4 fold right. They were not related in the rectangle crystal, but here now they are related and they belong to the same family 1 1 and 1 bar 1 belong to the same family as they are again related by a 4 fold. So, this is my 1 1 and 1 bar 1 they are related and for that is why they have been given an orange color both of them. The two red vectors are also belonging to the same family 0 1 and 0 1 bar belong to the same family related by a 4 fold twice. So, my 0 1 and 0 1 bar now are belonging to the same because I can operate my 4 fold twice and they give me the same kind of a and therefore, they belong to the same family 1 2 and 1 bar 2 do not belong to the same family in the square lattice they would belong to the same family right. In a crystal with 4 mm symmetry that is I take my square lattice and put a circle as a motif in other words I have taken a I would create a crystal with 4 mm symmetry 1 2 and 1 bar 2 would belong to the same family. Now, this is a square crystal because it has still got a four fold axis present. So, it comes under the class of square crystals, but it is not the highest symmetry of square crystal the highest symmetry square crystal would have 4 mm symmetry this square crystal has only 4 symmetry. Therefore, in spite of being a square crystal 1 2 and 1 bar 2 do not belong to the same family. So, this point has to be absolutely clear not only is the information that it belongs to a square crystal uh, need to be known I need to know the particular symmetry of that square crystal. So, the information merely that it is a square crystal is not sufficient for me for me to generate the family of directions or later on as you will see the family of planes I have to know the particular symmetry and in this case because it is only a four fold present my 1 2 direction cannot be related to 1 bar 2 by a any kind of a four fold operation therefore, they do not belong to the same family. So, let me write down a general uh, procedure for all the members h k belonging to a 4 crystal crystal having 4 symmetry there will be h k h bar k bar k bar h and k h bar. So, you can see that the h and k can be exchanged in position, but with one of them going negative. So, if a h k becomes k h then k bar has to become one of them has to be negative or it can make k h bar and h k can go to h bar k bar the full negative. So, for instance suppose I choose a direction 2 1 what are the members of this family there will be 2 1 1 bar 2 2 bar 1 bar which is equivalent to this kind of a thing and 1 2 bar. But for instance suppose I take 2 1 then 1 2 is not a member of the family of suppose I am taking a family 2 1 1 bar 2 bar is not a member of the 2 1 family it has its own family which is of the 1 2 kind of a family. So, that point has to be absolutely clear here. 
So, the two mirrors the vertical and the diagonal mirrors or the vertical horizontal and the diagonal mirrors are missing from this crystal and therefore, we note that for instance 1 0 and 0 1 belong to the same family which are related by a fourfold right. They were not related in the rectangle crystal, but here now they are related and they belong to the same family 1 1 and 1 bar 1 belong to the same family as they are again related by a fourfold. So, this is my 1 1 and 1 bar 1 they are related and for that is why they have been given an orange color both of them. The two red vectors are also belonging to the same family 0 1 and 0 1 bar belong to the same family related by a fourfold twice. So, my 0 1 and 0 1 bar now are belonging to the same because I can operate my fourfold twice and they give me the same kind of a and therefore, they belong to the same family 1 2 and 1 bar 2 do not belong to the same family in the square lattice they would belong to the same family right. In a crystal with 4 mm symmetry that is I take my square lattice and put a circle as a motif in other words I have taken a I would create a crystal with 4 mm symmetry 1 2 and 1 bar 2 would belong to the same family. Now, this is a square crystal because it has still got a fourfold axis present. So, it comes under the class of square crystals, but it is not the highest symmetry of square crystal the highest symmetry square crystal would have 4 mm symmetry this square crystal has only 4 symmetry. Therefore, in spite of being a square crystal 1 2 and 1 bar 2 do not belong to the same family. So, this point has to be absolutely clear not only is the information that it belongs to a square crystal uh, need to be known I need to know the particular symmetry of that square crystal. So, the information merely that it is a square crystal is not sufficient for me for me to generate the family of directions or later on as you will see the family of planes. I have to know the particular symmetry and in this case because it is only a fourfold present my 1 2 direction cannot be related to 1 bar 2 by a any kind of a fourfold operation therefore, they do not belong to the same family. So, let me write down a general uh, procedure for all the members h k belonging to a 4 crystal crystal having 4 symmetry there will be h k h bar k bar k bar h and k h bar. So, you can see that the h and k can be exchanged in position, but with one of them going negative. So, if a h k becomes k h then k bar has to become one of them has to be negative or it can be k h bar and h k can go to h bar k bar the full negative. So, for instance suppose I choose a direction 2 1 what are the members of this family there will be 2 1 1 bar 2 2 bar 1 bar which is equivalent to this kind of a thing and 1 2 bar. But for instance suppose I take 2 1 then 1 2 is not a member of the family of suppose I am taking a family 2 1. 1 bar 2 bar is not a member of the 2 1 family it has its own family which is of the 1 2 kind of a family. So, that point has to be absolutely clear. So, uh, this slide more than amply explains the fact that it is not enough if I know it is a square lattice it is not enough if I know it is a square crystal I need to know the symmetry of the square crystal which I am considering before I write down the members of the family. And therefore, if I already know it is a square crystal of 4 symmetry and I make a measurement of a property along the 2 1 direction then I do not have to make a measurement along the 1 bar 2 2 bar 1 bar or the 1 2 bar I would know the property would have the same value along those directions. On the other hand I will have to make additional measurement along the 1 2 direction because 1 2 direction is not related to 2 1 direction. If I were talking about a crystal like this wherein I have a square lattice with a circle motif with 4 mm symmetry then I do not have to make even that measurement because the symmetry of the crystal is very high. So, this is a clear cut example to explain how do I generate my family of directions for a crystal. Um, let me consider one more example to uh, sort of uh, clarify the matter uh, beyond doubt. So, let me take a rectangle crystal and in the rectangle crystal we would notice that for instance 1 0 and 0 1 had originally belonged to the same member in the uh, for instance the square crystal with 4 symmetry and if I had originally considered the rectangle crystal we had noticed that 1 1 and 1 bar 1 had belonged to the same family and 1 1 and 1 1 bar let me see go back here. So, we had 1 1 and 1 bar 1 had belonged to the same family here let me summarize what is belonging to the same family and what not 
1 1 and 1 bar 1 belong to the same family related by the mirror. So, this is my uh, crystal which I had constructed before. So, let me summarize how the crystal was constructed. I take my square lattice, put triangles and each lattice point to create a crystal. The only surviving symmetry common between the motif and the lattice is m and therefore, the crystal has m symmetry and since it has only m symmetry I call it a rectangle crystal. In this rectangle crystal 1 0 and 0 1 do not belong to the same family because this crystal has no four fold axis. 1 1 and 1 bar 1 continue to belong to the same family because they are related by this vertical mirror which you can see this vertical mirror which is shown in orange color. 1 1 and 1 1 bar do not belong to the same family. 0 1 and 0 1 bar do not belong to the same family. So, here now you are seeing that that originally a large families are getting split into smaller and smaller pieces and there are families like 0 1 which have only one member 0 1 even 0 1 bar is not belonging to the same family. So, my 0 1 is a vertical direction 0 1 bar is a downward direction and they do not belong to the same family. If I made a, a property measurement which has the same symmetry as that of this crystal not an higher symmetry equal to that of the crystal that kind of a crystal I can property consider then and we already seen one property for instance with respect to water flow. Now, the upward direction if I make a measurement of the property I will have to make an additional measurement along the downward direction and these two values would be different. Okay. Now, uh, of course, how different depends on the motif and the physical property, but they will be different. So, again 1 0 and 0 1 are different members different family. So, I see there are a lot of families emerging 0 1 and has only one member 0 1 bar has just one member 1 1 has two members 1 1 bar has two members like 1 1 bar and 1 bar 1 bar. So, you can see that originally uh, so what you might call a joint families are now broken down to nuclear families when you consider low, uh, lower symmetry crystals. Kavita has a question. Sir, should the Miller indices necessarily be an individual? Very good question. In fact, uh, let me go down to the board to explain. Kavita's question is that do Miller indices have always to be integers? So, le let me start with a lattice point and go to some point which is another lattice point. Of course, I am drawing a square kind of lattice, but it could be in general be any lattice. So, as long as I start from a lattice point and land up with any other lattice point. Now, what is in what terms am I considering are these numbers in some units? No, they are in integral multiples of the lattice parameter. So, in other words this a what I call along this direction could actually be 3.14 angstroms and this another b could be some other number which could be say 5.32 angstroms, but I never put in these numbers. So, the point number 1 why they start to be look look very nice and beautiful and which is the reason why we want to use Miller indices we do not want to always be dealing with these kind of numbers we want to be dealing with integers. And since I am considering a perfect lattice translation vector which goes from one lattice point to the other therefore, these will be in integral multiples of the lattice translation vector and therefore, you will always land up with integers. Okay. Now, for instance my direction let me take a simple direction for the like this in Miller indices would be 1 1. What if I write 1 third 1 1? You can do this operation all I am saying here is that in other words suppose I want to expand it I will write it as 1 third 1 third, but as you saw previously when I do Miller indices I always factor out common factors and I write my indices I would write my indices 1 third 1 1 which would nothing but be a vector which is 1 third in length. So, this is my a b and I split my a b into 3 parts and this will be my 1 third 1 1. Okay. If I were to start putting more difficult kind of integers for instance suppose I put it within my bracket 1 third and I put say for instance 1 fifth. So, what I would do I would do my normal rationalization process I would bring down this is uh, I will write down this as uh, 5 by 15 and 3 by 15 and I will pull out my so I go from here to here then I will pull out my 1 by 15 outside and write down this as 5 3. So, this is a 5 3 vector which is 1 15th in length right right. Normal lattice translation vectors would always be 
integers, because you are starting from one lattice point and landing up at other lattice point and you are ignoring the detail that this actually that in terms of physical dimensions they could be some arbitrary number. Since you are talking about perfect lattice translation vectors, they would always have integer values, but we will we could in principle have and we will see examples of this especially when we consider dislocations and we will be talking about partial dislocations, we will see that those partial dislocations do not have as their burgers vector complete integers and you will have to represent them with these kind of indices having partial. So, let me give peek ahead and give you an example for instance, you could have a partial dislocation which has an index like this. So, this this kind of numbers would come in and this obviously tells you it is not a perfect lattice translation vector, it does not join one lattice point to another lattice point. If it did so, then automatically the numbers will be integers and even if I had numbers like this, what I would do? I would write whatever is coming within the bracket as integers and pull out all the uh, what you may call the fractional part outside. So, this I would do, so that I still have a lattice translation vector inside and a magnitude given outside. So, this is how I will deal with these kind of vectors. So, a very important question and uh, in fact, uh, as I said we will have to deal with these kind of um, fractional indices later on having a full understanding that a normal lattice translation vector always has to be having integral values, because they collect one lattice point to the other and we have already factored out all those other uh, dimensional values. Okay. So, just summarizing this uh, thought provoking example once more that we have seen that uh, a family of directions cannot be written uh, down mechanically, we need to know the symmetrically related set that means the symmetry operations of the crystal and in this for instance, this rectangle crystal had m symmetry. Uh, we have seen that rectangle lattices could have 2 mm symmetry, but this is just m symmetry and therefore, originally members which originally belong to the same family could not uh, would not belong to the same family in the lower symmetry crystal which I have constructed from the square or the rectangle lattice. So, this point has to be completely clear and the general rule for h k would be h k and h bar k and this inversion of h index is possible because of the mirror plane which is a vertical mirror plane. So, it is important to note that all directions related by symmetry one and one only if they are related by symmetry form a family and no other case can I relate them and call them members of a family.